Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we are very excited to have Jake Miller here from the Edgy Duct Tape podcast, um, also creator of Edgy Gifts at Jake Miller Tech. Um, Jake's going to be leading us through the next hour, so I'm just going to hand it right over to you. Thanks, Jake. Awesome. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. You hear me good? Okay. And, you see, and do you see my, my face or do you see my, uh, my, my slides? What do you see right now? We brought your face right now. <laughs> it's me. This is me. Do you guys like, this is, this is my quarantine haircut. I had to do it myself. It takes my barber about 18 minutes. It took me about two and a half hours <laughs> to get through it. And don't look at the back. It, it's not a mullet but it's not far from it. It's tough. This is, this is what we're dealing with right now, folks. We're all like learning, learning to do new, new jobs and things like that. We're home. Like I am a uh, kindergarten teacher. I am a third grade teacher. I am a fourth grade teacher. I am a tech integration specialist. I am a barber. I am now hosting webinars. I've never done this before, right? <laughs> we're taking on all these different roles um, and it's stressful. So I appreciate those of you, the 142, I believe of you, who took time out of their day to, to join us for this. And those of you that are watching it later, uh, we're busy and we're doing lots of things. And this is stressful and it's really awesome that you guys are taking time to do this uh, and, and to, to do this for your learners because that, that's what it's all about. And that's what you guys are doing is, is trying to do something special for your learners. And then that's just wonderful and that's awesome. Uh, I'm gonna go back to sharing my screen now. You should see my slides pop right back up there. Okay, let me know if you don't. I'll make sure I have the chat up so I can see it just in case. Um, where's my chat button at? There it is. Okay. Uh, and, and so as you see here down at the bottom of this slide are the, is the link to the show, uh, to, or not to the show notes. I'm, like, I'm in front of my microphone, so it's like I'm recording a podcast. There are no show notes for this, Jake. <laughs> That is the link to these slides that we're going over today. Uh, and if you go to that link, you'll, you'll see some information about me. It is jakemiller.net slash pair deck webinar. And I am, as it says here, and as uh, Danielle already said, and as I said, I am Jake. I am the host of the Educational Duct Tape Podcast, as you can see right there, edu.ducttape.com. You could find me on almost every social media platform at Jake Miller Tech, and my website is jakemiller.net. Now, if you go to this website here, uh, jakemiller.net slash Pear Deck webinar, uh, you're also going to have a chance to enter to win some prizes. So we're going to give away some prizes. I do it in live sessions when I'm in the room with people. So why not do it when we're digitally in the room together, right? So we're going to do some giveaways today. So by going to jakemiller.net slash Pear Deck webinar, you'll not only get access to the slides and things that we're going over today, but you'll also get entered to win a couple different giveaways. So the first two things I'm going to give away are two stickers that I'm going to send in the mail. Don't worry, I'll wipe the envelope down with Lysol wipes before I send it to these winners. But they get to choose one sticker to get sent to them along with some educational duct tape stickers, of course. But they could either choose the correct sticker, which is this one, right? It's pronounced GIF with a hard G, or this one, which I'm not even going to say it out loud. You guys can say it out loud yourselves on your end if you'd like to. Did you say it? I, I can't say it. I'm like, I, I just can't get myself to say it. So two people will win one of those stickers, whichever one they choose, and I'll throw in some other stickers with them as well. And then two people will also win access to online learning opportunities I do called GIF a Day. Uh, GIF a Day is a thing where for about 30 days, uh, the participants receive a GIF in their inbox every morning, uh, every weekday morning, learning a new skill. So currently I do it on Google Sheets, but I'll be doing it on other tools in the future. So two people will win access to that. And then as if that's not enough. Pear Deck has stepped up to give away four other prizes. So they're going to get some Pear Deck swag too. So two people will win the, the GIF or GIF stickers. Two people will win access to GIF a day and four people will win some Pear Deck swag. So make sure you go to that website right there, jakemiller.net slash Pear Deck webinar and fill out the form that's right below the slides. And then you can enter to win that. Let me know if you have any problems finding access to those different things. Margaret's excited. You see how excited Margaret is? Yeah, <laughs> we're all excited. Great. So as I said before, I I am Jake, and we are going to talk primarily about Pear Deck today, but I'm going to give you some options, some opportunities to talk about some other ed tech tools that you've been using in remote learning. My hope is, as kind of all of us tech people are doing right now, that the things that we're doing to empower our teachers to connect with our students now during remote learning are going to carry over into the future. When we get back to normal, guys, we are going to get back to normal. I know it. It's going to, it's going to happen. Okay. We, we've got this. We're going to get back to normal and then we'll be able to use things like Pear Deck in our classrooms. Okay. So let's talk about how to actually go about using Pear Deck and, and why we might use Pear Deck. So first off, 
what we're going to do in the order today is first, I'm going to show you how to turn Google Slides into a Pear Deck activity. Now, this also works with PowerPoint as well, but I'm going to be doing it in Google Slides. It works pretty similarly in PowerPoint if, you, if you're a PowerPoint user, but I'm going to be doing it in Google Slides. So you'll see me take a set of slides from regular slides into Pear Deck slides. Okay. Next, we use them together synchronously. Now, you won't have to do that if you're not comfortable watching the webinar and using Pear Deck at the same time. You could also just watch on my screen, but I want you to see the setup and the experience at the same time. Okay. Next, then we'll see the results as the teacher. So on my, on my end, I will make sure that I'm showing you exactly what everything looks like uh, for a teacher so that you could see it right there to be able to uh, to, to see exactly what the teacher experience looks like. Then I will talk about how you could use these asynchronously because I am a big believer that in these remote learning situations, we should minimize the things that we're doing that are synchronous. I know it happened this morning in our own household where my wife and I are both educators, so we're both home and able to support our kids. We forgot about one of the synchronous meetings because we had so many things going on and my daughter ended up in a panic because she was late to one. So asynchronous is a lot easier on the family, so I'm gonna make sure we talk about how to use uh, Pear Deck asynchronously. There are values to synchronous as well. But we're going to talk about both how to use it synchronously and asynchronously. And then the et cetera session of today's webinar, we'll be talking about some other extensions of those two different things that we share about. And then finally, some Q&A, some opportunities for you to ask some questions about Pear Deck or about other things remote learning. And we probably won't get to all the questions before the hour's over. I'm always available on Twitter and things like that to answer questions. Uh, just reach out, email, uh, Twitter and you'll, you'll find it on that website link there. Uh, and by the way, the, registering to win the prizes, you, you have until, until after the session ends before you have to worry about it. So if you haven't gotten in there and registered to win prizes, don't worry about it, no rush, okay? So why is it that I am a, a person that talks about Pear Deck? Well, it all comes from my belief that is what educational duct tape is. So those of you that are already familiar with my podcast, the Educational Duct Tape Podcast know about this, I believe that educational technology is that it's most useful when it's not the goal of the lesson, but a tool used to solve a problem or meet a goal. Okay, so we don't go into our classrooms thinking today I'm going to use Flipgrid or today I'm going to use Pear Deck or today I'm going to use Scratch or today I'm going to use Google Drawings. We think today I'm going to do this for my students or this as an educator. I'm going to formatively assess my students or I'm going to make sure my students are okay or we're going to review the scientific process or we're going to do whatever um, things we pedagogically need to do and then we choose technologies as tools and tools like duct tape and that's where the name came from because duct tape is the one tool that you could use in almost every situation right duct tape so educational duct tape is the idea that educational technologies are tools that we use to solve teacher problems now in this last month or so it feels like the technology is coming first because that's the only way we have to connect and that's difficult but in reality the belief is we're focusing on what we're doing for our students and our learners and the learning first. By the way, just so you guys know, as we dive into the Pear Deck portion of this, um, there is a chat feature. Uh, Danielle and some of the team from Pear Deck are monitoring and I'm not looking at it while I'm presenting, but if you have questions in there, they'll make sure they get to me or I'll check them out afterwards and I'll make sure I follow up on them. Uh, but we'll do some Q&A at the end and make sure we catch any of them. It's just too many streams of input for me to pay attention as we go through this stuff. Okay, so let's actually turn these slides into Pear Deck. So these are the slides we're going to use. Now, the first step before doing this is to have the Pear Deck add-on installed in Google Drive, or Google Slides, excuse me. So in Google Slides, I would go to add-ons, I would click get add-ons, I would find the Pear Deck add-on and go ahead and install it or set it up. I've already got it, so I'm gonna skip over that. This picture, by the way, is taken from the Pear Deck How-To Handbook for Teachers. Fantastic resource, I've got a link to it later in the slides uh, written by my friend Mike Muhammad and uh, Mary Alice Fouts. Uh, fantastic resource. I just stole this image from them because they did such a wonderful job in there. And I've got a link to it in, the, in the, uh, the notes on the slide as well as at the end of the slideshow too. I also need for the way that I use Pear Deck, I need the Pear Deck, Pear, Pear Deck Power Up Chrome extension. This lets me do a few different things that I couldn't do in Pear Deck otherwise, and I'll share what a few of those things are as we go. So those are kind of some prerequisites. I've got to have the add-on installed, and I've got to have the extension installed to do some of the things that are in here. Okay, and once we dive into it on the very next slide, we're going to start adding questions. We'll go over six different question types that you can add in Pear Deck, and here they are on your screen. There are text questions, there are multiple choice questions, there are number questions, and there are website questions, which 
aren't really a question so much as an activity. So you can put anything from the web into a Paradox slide for users to access. Okay. There's also drawing slides, which are a lot of fun, and draggable slides, which are also a lot of fun. Now, we're going to ignore, the, well, I'm, I'm sorry, we're not going to ignore those two. We're going to focus on those two a little bit later in the session. But the two important things about those is notice the crowns pointing to them and the stars by them. Those are premium features in Pear Deck, which you could get by using the other ones at the top, but these are two of my favorite ones. So they're awesome to have access to in the premium one. And Pear Deck has been nice enough to give us all free access to premium during the course of these coronavirus uh, influence closures in this remote learning. So if you haven't already gotten that, you'll see it in the email that comes out in a couple days with the recording of this video, you'll see how to make sure that you have that premium access so you can have those draw slides and those draggable slides. And they are phenomenal. But the other ones that are available for free are great as well. So let's go ahead and try it out. So the first thing I'm gonna ask you to do, and you don't have to do this in the chat, we're gonna do this via Pear Deck, is I'm going to ask you a Pear Deck question. Not yet, I'm gonna set it up now. I'm gonna ask you a Pear Deck question about who you are, and if you're on Twitter, what your Twitter handle is. So here I am, I've got my slide ready. So how do I make it so this slide asks you a question? Well, I've gotta go up here to the Pear Deck button here. Okay, and it's gonna open this sidebar up here. And I've got that Pear Deck button. Let me zoom into it so you can see it nice and close there. There's that Pear Deck button. That comes up on my uh, toolbar because I went into add-ons and added it, okay? And then it opens up way over here on the slide, Oop. as I jump from slides here. There we go, okay. It comes up over here on the side and it gives me the option to ask these different questions. So that's what we're gonna focus on here are these different questions. So over here, you see those six different questions that I mentioned earlier, text, choice, number, website, draw, and draggable. So here I'm gonna ask you a text slide or text question. So I've got my slide already. All I've gotta do is click on text. It's gonna take a moment to set it up. It's gonna make sure I know what it's doing. It's gonna ask me some questions here and there'll be a little bit of a processing time, but then it's gonna add that right onto that slide. And then what I'll see happen is there's a new, like, like footer on the bottom of that slide and you have to leave it there. You can't delete it. Uh, but that's part of the working of Pear Deck is having that there. It's all set up. That slide is now ready to go. That's all I've got to do. Okay. There's some stuff down in the, in the slide notes to lead me through it in case you're a first timer with Pear Deck. And there's also this thing down here to tell you it's coming up on the screen, but otherwise I don't have anything else to do on this slide. Now note, by the way, that I have a GIF on this slide. I love this GIF of this kid. Wait a minute. Who are you? I love this GIF, but it's important when you're using GIFs to have that add-on that I mentioned here, which you can see up here on my slide, the, uh, I'm sorry, on my screen, the Pear Deck, I can zoom in, zoom in up there. Yeah, I can't zoom into that part. Up here in my extensions bar, the Pear Deck Power Up extension. And you have to have that in order to have the GIFs play. Otherwise they'll play on my screen or the projector in the classroom, but they won't play on the student screen. With that Pear Deck Power Up extension installed, then it will play for the kids. It's not essential, but it's, it is a nice feature feature to have added in there. It is essential for me because as you guys probably know about me, I love making GIFs like this one here about how to translate in Google Slides. But because I have that extension, when we launch this in Pear Deck later, you guys will see this as, a, uh, as an actual GIF on your screen. It'll actually load and run on your screen. Without that power up extension, it wouldn't. It would only load on the teacher screen the, the, um, or the projector. Okay, let's add another text question just to practice how to do it. So this one here says, what's one tip that you can share for remote learning? Okay, so I'm gonna add a text slide. It'll take a second to process it and that's all I gotta do. So again, I've gotta click on the Pear Deck button here to open it up. I come over here, I click on where it says text and it automatically adds it to the slide that I have open at that time. I'm having a heck of a time zooming back out there. Maybe I should stop zooming in. Teach yourself a lesson there, Jake, stop zooming in. Now I can see it down to the bottom of that slide. The last text slide I'm gonna ask you is how else could you use a text slide? So I'm gonna ask you when I launch this Pear Deck activity, how you would use a text slide. So let's go ahead and add that in. And then next we're gonna move on to draggable slides. Now draggables are a premium, but everybody has access to the premiums now. So when I launch this slide, I'm gonna be asking you to show me where you're at. Okay, we're gonna do it twice, once a worldwide and once a US map, because the worldwide might be kind of hard to get exact on it. So let's click draggable. Okay, and that same little box is gonna come up here, but it's gonna ask me some questions that it didn't have to ask me in the text slide. So first it says, what would you like it to be that they're dragging around the screen? So there's a whole bunch of different options for what I'd like it to look like. I'm just gonna stick with a dot. What color would you like it to be? I'd like it to be orange. 
looks nice. And how big would you like the dot to be? I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller because we're gonna have a lot of you in there. So I'd like it to be a kind of a small dot so that we could, see, so everybody could see them when we put them all together. And then I'm gonna click update slide. And now it's ready to go, okay? It'll process for a second, but then it'll be ready to go. Again, this draggable slide is a premium feature, uh, but everybody has, it, uh, has access to it for now. So just in case we can't see everything clearly on a world map, let's actually do this US map as a draggable slide too. And I put a box over here that says I'm in another country. So if you're out of the US, you can put your, uh, put your circle in that one. So let's click on draggable. Same process, just so you can see it again. This comes up, I pick what item I want it to be. I think this time it should be a pair. That's appropriate, right? And I think it should be green, Pear Deck green. That's appropriate. That's actually a little bit darker than Pear Deck green. It's not kind of a Kelly. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and then click update slide. That's all that you have to do in draggable slides to set them up. Now, there's a lot of different uses of draggable slides and you guys are gonna share about some of them here in a couple minutes. One that I really like, especially during remote learning are these things where you're saying like, how are you doing, right? So Stephanie Howell, one of my favorite people to follow on Twitter and a co-host of the Google Educator Group for Ohio, which is a online video you can watch and podcast you can watch, even if you're not in Ohio like me, uh, she shared in a recent episode about these different like kind of temperature check slides that she's using with staff as well as with students to check in on how they are. So I'm gonna say, which rubber duck represents you? Okay, so I'm gonna turn this into a draggable slide. We'll leave it as a dot, and this time we'll make it orange. No, you know what, let's make it a star, and let's make it yellow. No, yellow wouldn't show up well, would it? Let's make it red. And let's leave it like that. Let's click update slide. That's all it takes to do draggable slides. Now, one thing to keep in mind with draggable slides uh, that we're probably going to find out when we do launch this and you guys actually participate in this deck is that when, the, when there's a really large group like we've got here in this webinar, they might run a little bit slow. So we'll check it out and see it. But for your normal class sizes, 30, even 50, 60, like it's going to be totally fine. And we'll see. Maybe it'll be fine for our large group. But it is one thing uh, to watch out for just on the draggable slides. So the next question I'm gonna ask you guys is how else could you use a draggable slide? So I'm gonna ask you for your ideas. So this will be a text-based slide, even though it's about draggable slides. Okay, and now let's do some multiple choice slides. Now on this multiple choice slide, I have a question that we kind of alluded to in the beginning of the video, which is which pronunciation of the .gif file do you believe in? Is it GIF or is it GIF? So I'm gonna ask this as a multiple choice question. Now you'll see that when I ask this question to you, you're not actually gonna click on the pictures, you'll see the pictures. What you're gonna click on are the choices that I type in here. So I'm gonna type in hard G, GIF, and soft G, GIF, and um, please don't make me pick. Because some people just like don't wanna be part of the argument, right? And I click update slide. Notice I can add more choices if I want to. And then I update the slide and you'll see what that looks like for the student in a little bit. So now it's been added. And notice down here in the uh, comments, it tells me what the options are, which is nice while you're presenting to be able to read them from right there as you're presenting and you look in the speaker notes. Okay, let's do some more multiple choice slides. Here, let's find out what everybody does, what, what role you have as an educator. So let's do multiple choice. And I'm gonna ask what you teach. So we'll say pre-K, and we'll say K to three, and we'll say fourth to, to eighth grade. And gotta add another, and I'll add a few more. And we'll say ninth to 12th, and we'll say college. And we'll spell it correctly, Jake. <laughs> and we'll say professional development. Okay, so as you can see, I was able to add six uh, choices in there. Click update slide and you'll see what that looks like when it becomes your choice. Okay, next up, as the pattern has been, let's do a slide where I ask you how else you would use it. So this will be a text-based slide. And when we launch the Pear Deck, you'll have the opportunity to tell me how you would use it. Okay, now let's try out number slides. Now I love the way the number slides display because it doesn't display just like a text slide with a bunch of numbers. It actually displays on a number line and it looks a lot like a box and whisker plot, which from my days in eighth grade math, like if I could just have a tool where I could generate these uh, box and whisker plots from student data, that would just be amazing. I would love that. So we're gonna try that out with these. So this first question says, I have been an educator for blank years. So I'm gonna click number. And then you'll see that becomes the option is what you just, all, all your option is, is to type a number in there. Okay, let's do another one. I have forgotten what day it was blank times today. I think I'm at three. <laughs> what day is it today? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna ask a number of questions. How many times have you forgotten what day it was? Okay, and when we, when we launch the Paradigm in a little bit, you'll have the opportunity to type that in and see how that represents, okay? 
And then I'm gonna ask you as the pattern goes, how else could we use that? So there's a text slide there for us. Okay, now one of my very favorites are the drawing slides. So here I'm gonna ask you what's for dinner and you're gonna to have to draw a picture of it. I can't wait to see your drawings. So I'm gonna click draw. And now note when you draw and you'll see this in a second, you're essentially drawing on the screen. So what I could have done is I could have added a picture of a plate or something here for you to draw it right onto or like a cafeteria tray for you to draw it onto because that becomes the background for your drawing. So that's super useful on a lot of different situations, especially in classes like math and science and social studies with, with uh, maps. And heck, actually, all subjects could really use that. Here's another use of it. Uh, back when I presented in Columbus at the OETC conference, we did a Mentimeter where I asked them what some of their favorite ed tech tools were. And here were the results. Note, it looks like Screencastify and Flipgrid are the biggest, but notice that Pear Deck is listed here twice, once with and without a space. So I think that probably makes Pear Deck the champion of this poll here. Just saying, I, I didn't rig this or anything, okay? But we're going to make this a drawing slide. And then when the slide launches, you'll have the option to circle or highlight or draw a line under any of the options here to say which ones you're currently using in remote learning. Okay. Here's another example of using a drawing slide. This is another one that Stephanie shared during that same episode of the GEG Ohio uh, meeting, which is a podcast and a video that you can watch. And there's a link to the, to the, to where she shared it. Uh, so giving credit to Stephanie there, but let's make this a drawing slide. So earlier we did a slide like this as a draggable slide. Now you can also do it as a drawing slide. So instead of dragging the star to the baby Yoda that you feel like right now, you could circle the baby Yoda that you feel like, feel like right now. We could all use a little more baby Yoda in our lives. Don't you agree? Oh, every now and then we see an error message pop up. Okay. It happens to me, maybe one out of every, I don't know, 70 slides that I add, something like that. You just close it, try it again. That's it. And it, because it's so fast to add these slides, it doesn't really make that, you know, it's not really that big of a problem that occasionally that happens to you. And you see it entered in there. Let's ask you text. How else could you use a drawing slide? Okay, so that's all of our slide types. Now that's me adding slides of my own creation. Pear Deck also provides a whole bunch of templates in what's called the template library. I'm gonna show you how to add them and then we'll show you what kind of different options you have there, okay? So the template library pops up over here in this same sidebar we were in earlier. I'm taking a risk and zooming in here. We'll see if I can zoom back out fluently. And it's right there, this button that I click on. Oh, I made it back out, nice. Click on the template library and you see they're organized into different categories, okay? So let's jump into beginning of the lesson. Okay, and you can see a whole bunch of really awesome slides there. The nice thing about these slides is you don't have to use them exactly how they're set up there. You can make changes to them. So I'm gonna add uh, this thumbs up, some thumbs down slide. I just click on it, it pops right in there. And when I click on it, I can change the words to it. Right, so let's see, there it goes. And you see it added it right after the slide I was at before. So instead of adding it onto the slide because it's a template of a slide, it adds it after it, okay? And I'm gonna change the words here to, how are you, if I could type, feeling about Pear Deck? Okay, and then we'll, you'll have a chance, this is a draggable slide, as you can see from down here, to drag the blue dot to the correct spot on this slide, okay? I could change these images if I want to. I could take out the thumbs up and thumbs down. I could put the GIF and GIF stickers here. I could do whatever I want to, right? So this is just a template that I could tweak however I want to. So let's also come back over here to the template library. Uh, let's stay in the beginning lesson ones, and let's grab this one here with this boy thinking on the rock here. Wait for it to add in there. You see it adds in right after that thumbs up, thumbs down slide. I'm gonna change this to, what else are you hoping to learn about Pear Deck? Okay, and that will be a text question. You can see down there, it says, it's a students write your response question. Okay, let's now add, let's see, I'm gonna go back out of these beginning of the lesson slide templates. And I'm gonna jump down to the, um, let's see, end of the lesson slide templates here. Okay, here's a thumbs up, or here's a smiley face one. I'm gonna add that one in. 
Okay. We're going to ask you how you're feeling. One of my favorite things about Pear Deck is how focused they are on things like social emotional learning. There's a lot of stuff in here in support of social emotional learning. So asking think questions like these, especially during this time when our students are in a rough spot and we're in a rough spot and our mental health is so vastly important. It always is. But now we know that there's a lot of stressors going on. So asking this simple question, circle how you're feeling, and then you know which kids to follow up with. Now, note, you'll see in a second when we launch this that it's actually going to automatically ask you this question when, when we launch the slides. Unless you turn it off in your settings, it automatically asks every student at the beginning of every lesson and how are you feeling? Just because Pear Deck believes it's important, and I agree. But you can turn off that setting if you want to. Okay. So now you could see, I'm not going to go through the rest of the template uh, sessions here, but you could see there's beginning of the lesson, during the lesson, end of the lesson. There's critical thinking slides. There's a bunch of social emotional learning slides I just alluded to. There are ones that are example questions. There are ones that are for littles or for math or for science or for social studies or for world languages or for ELA. And if your subject isn't there, that doesn't mean they don't respect that. It means you come in here and you take a, a slide that might fit your needs and just tweak it the way that you need it to. So I've gone, gone ahead and added a few here as well. I added in a during lesson slide for a stretch break. It said five minutes. I changed it to 20 seconds. We're not going to have time for a five minute stretch break. Okay. I added in a drawing slide. And by the way, I should note on that stretch break slide, it, it's just an instruction slide. There's just text on the slide. It's not actually going to have you respond. You're not going to have to prove that you stretched or anything. It's just like a regular slide. But Pear Deck does offer some regular slides like that too. This one here is a drawing slide where you're going to show me what time it is, where you are on this analog clock. Here's one of my very favorites as a former middle school math teacher is a graphing slide. And you'll see one of the reasons I really love this when I actually show the responses to this slide. By the way, I don't like the way that these axes are set up. So I can change them. One, two, three, four. I'd rather this be five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No offense, guys. I just don't trust you to have to count by whatever interval that was. I'm going to make you count by ones. We're, we're, we're teacher tired right now at the end of the day. So, so I'm going to make it a little bit easier on you. If I can just get to this 30, use the tab key to get there. Oh, I missed it. There we go. And make this negative five. So it counts by ones. Okay. I put in a Venn diagram slide. I put in a chronology slide where you're going to order the numbers one, two, three, four, five on them to tell me what order these devices and technologies came out. I don't know the answer. <laughs> so maybe you'll be able to tell me. Okay. Uh, uh, this is one of my favorite ELA ones where you correct a sentence by actually annotating onto the screen. And then after we do that, we're going to talk about the slide type that I skipped over, which are website slides, slides where you add something from the web. So I'm going to go through a di few different examples here. This is a link to an episode of the Educational Duct Tape podcast where uh, Mike Mohammed, uh, no, actually this was Stacy Roshan in this one. Stacy was sharing about how she's using Pear Deck during remote learning. And so I'm going to have you guys listen to it. So I'm going to click website slide. I've got my link ready to go. I just had it there so it was easy for me to access. So I copy it from wherever I want to paste it in and you should see a preview of the site. And you see if I scroll down in this preview, there's a play button. So you guys will be able to play. Now you'll also see the instructions on the slide, which tell you to jump to 48, 49 in the video, to, or I'm sorry, in the audio to play the correct spot. Okay. I can also play YouTube videos. So for example, Mike Muhammad was in this episode of my podcast on, that, that's featured on YouTube and he talks about Pear Deck in that one. So I want to show you guys that one too. But there's two different ways to show Pear Deck slides, or I'm sorry, to show YouTube videos. One is, see, watch, if I copy this link to this YouTube video and click website and paste it in here, I get an error message, okay? YouTube doesn't work that way. It has to, the, to certain sites, that regular link doesn't work. And you know how I figured out how to fix this? I Googled it and it was, it was like the first result. It was very simple. Um, and you could reach out to, to myself or anybody else who uses Pear Deck to figure it out. But for a video, you actually don't have to do that anyhow. I could just like I normally would in Google Sites, go to insert video by URL, put in that URL and put select. And that video is gonna go right onto the page there. The video options come up automatically over here and I want it to start at 31, 32. Okay, all right, okay. The other way to add that YouTube video in is to actually get the embed code for it. So watch this. Here's that Boys. YouTube video. Yeah. You Instead know, and of I think sharing it from this link right here, what I could do is say, okay, I wanna start at that time, click embed. And I need this link that's right here. So you have to click in there and use the arrow keys. You can't use the mouse. 
to highlight that part of the link. Now, I don't have to do this. You'll see how it plays differently in here than if I just did insert video. But this is just to let you know that there is a way to add anything from the internet. It's just different on some sites, okay? Most sites, you just copy the link and put it right in. And I'll show you a few more examples. So I've copied that piece of text. And now here in my webinar, let's, I'm sorry, in my slide deck, I'm gonna click website, copy that link in, and now you see the video is actually embedded there instead of like it was before. Okay, let's add some other web content to our slides here. So I love Mentimeter for asking word cloud questions and you saw one earlier. We could ask that from within Pear Deck. So there's my link to my Mentimeter presentation. There it is. That's exactly what the students are gonna see on their screen. Type in the words, submit the, the answer to the question. It says, what do you teach? They'll type it in and click enter. Super simple, okay? So Mentimeter is a different tool that I know how to use. So I pull it in here. You don't have to go learn to use Mentimeter just to use it in here. You kind of bring in the tools that you're already using, okay? You could also use Answer Garden, which is a similar tool. So there's a link to an Answer Garden question that I put up. I'm gonna put in a website. I'm gonna paste it right in there. And there it is right there, all ready to go. Type in your answer, click submit. So you'll see what that looks like when I launch this for you guys to participate in as students. Okay, Quizlet. I can also embed Quizlet cards. Now Quizlet cards are a little bit tricky. This is another one where I put, uh, go to website and enter in the text and an error message comes up instead. Now it's okay to just go ahead and do that because what they'll just see on their screen is a link. But with most sites, if you do a simple Google search or reach out to somebody who's already in the know, they'll be able to tell you how to do it instead. So watch this, I'm gonna go to a new tab. I'm gonna go to that link. I'm gonna click down here on these three dots and click embed. And just like in YouTube, I copy this code right here. Right there, I need that. And that will actually work just fine in there. Wait till you see those Pear Deck slides there. Or those Quizlet questions, I mean. I'm on flashcards mode, yep. Okay, and there they see, you, the, it's gonna come up on the screen there. Actually, I can't was match, I want it to be flashcards. Let me change that the link there. There we go. Okay, update slide. And that's gonna go right in there for you guys. I can also put in Google Forms. So here's the Google Form that you filled out earlier to enter to win a prize. So in case you didn't enter just yet, when we do the actual going through these slides, you'll be able to fill out the form here too. Copy that link that's in the send button in Google Forms, paste it right in there. You're gonna see it right inside of Pear Deck and be able to fill it out right there. Not a lot of situations where you'd use Google Forms while you're in Pear Deck, but if you need information in a Pear Deck set and a Google Forms setting, maybe you have a quiz in Google Forms that's connected to Google Classroom and you want it to auto grade and go into there, that's certainly an option because it could auto grade for you. Okay. I can also put in videos from Flipgrid. This is one of my favorite things and Mike Muhammad shared this on Twitter the other day and I was like, Oh my gosh, what a great idea. Because one of my favorite things in Flipgrid as of about a year ago is the Flipgrid shorts camera, which allows me to create super short, super simple little videos and host them in Flipgrid and not even ask anybody to respond to them. They're literally just as a teacher, me recording a video. So watch this. That's a link to a Flipgrid short I recorded earlier today. I'm gonna go to website. I'm gonna paste it right there. And there it is. That video is gonna play on your screen. You'll see it when we get to that slide. Okay, very last thing I'm gonna ask you guys when we launch this is share your ideas for using website slides in Pear Deck. So what other websites might you use in there? There's a lot of different options. So I'll give you a chance to share that, okay? Now it is time as, as the Joker is saying here to try this out and here we go. Let's actually try this as a class. Now you've got some options on your end as to how you want to handle this as I launch this for you to participate in students. Your first option is to participate from the same device you're on right now. So open up a separate tab from where you're in the Zoom meeting and be going in both of them. If you're not comfortable with that, that's okay, don't do it because I got some other options for you. But if you are comfortable with it or if you wanna swipe back and forth between two different screens on it, you could do that. Your second option to participate is to grab your cell phone or something like that or grab a Chromebook that's sitting next to you and access the Pear Deck from there too. That way you could see my screen in Zoom and you could see 
uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in the Zoom webinar, and you could see Pear Deck on your phone if you want to do that. Another option is to just watch me because I'm going to show you student view two from my screen. Okay, so you'll see it all on my screen. So if you just want to keep sitting back and watching, that's totally fine. That'll work. Okay, or your fourth option is that you have fallen asleep at your computer. If you have, nighty night, I'll, I'll sing you a lullaby at the end of this session to make sure you sleep well and rest okay. Okay. <laughs> A couple notes before we do start. One uh, set of settings that you'll see in your Pear Deck uh, settings are these two right here. These are two important ones, okay? Now, when you have students access your Pear Deck, you have an uh, option of do you want to require them to have a login to get in? Uh, and do you want it to be Google or Microsoft? Unfortunately, you can pick Google. You could pick Microsoft, but you can't pick both. Okay, that is one thing I wish would be changed. Um, so I, since I know some of you are Google users and I know some of you are Microsoft users, I've turned that off. So it's not gonna require you, you to log in at all. A Little bit less secure, okay? But in your classrooms, you'll be able to manage that by turning that on because I'm sure all of your students have the same kind of account. The other note, one of my very favorite features in Google, I'm sorry, in Pear Deck, is the takeaways docs that students in a Google domain can get. Okay, because I've turned off the Google thing, you won't be able to get those takeaways, but I will show you one uh, towards the end of the session. So I'm not going to be generating any takeaways because some of you are Microsoft users and some of you maybe don't even have a login you want to use. So I, I didn't want to have any logins prohibiting you from getting into the session if you want to access it. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it out. So to launch this webinar, to launch this Pear Deck activity, I, in that same sidebar over here, I'm just going to click on start lesson. Okay, and as soon as I do that, I'll see this tab change and I'll see another tab come up. Okay, but first I've got to make a choice. This is an important choice. Do I want this activity to be student paced, which would create an asynchronous activity or instructor paced? Now, student paced normally, you know, two months ago, most people were using so that their, their class could all take it at the same time, but move at the same pace. Now, a lot of people are using student paced so that their whole class can take it at whatever time they're available to get on the computer because we know that not everybody is able to participate in the activities at the same time. So that's one of the huge benefits of student paced. So I could just click on this button, send out the link to my students and they can access whenever they're ready. In this example though, because we're all on the webinar right now, well not all, some people are watching later I'm sure, but because so many of us are, we're gonna do this as an instructor paced activity, okay? Now, you see this separate tab open up, and that's because I'm on a premium account right now, as you will be as well. And that means that you get an extra little bonus that you don't normally get in a free account, which is called the teacher dashboard. And there's this important warning that comes up that says, this is a view just for you. What that means is this shows student names on it, and you don't wanna be showing that to your class. So keep in mind that this tab opens where it's the, uh, the dashboard view, and this tab is still open that's your projector view. Okay, I could just go ahead and close this teacher dashboard if I want to, but there's some really rich data in there. This is the one that you want projecting up on your screen. So what you could do is close this one, have this one open and projecting. When you're in class in person, a wonderful thing to do is what this guy in the picture is doing, which is he has the teacher dashboard open on his tablet so he can walk around the room. His computer's plugged into the projector, projecting this tab and his, uh, his teacher device that he's carrying around with him is showing this tab. And that's a really wonderful way for him to be able to follow up with students while he goes. But you want to point that out. So I'm going to click got it. And this is the code that you guys want. And notice it's telling me what I'm projecting. So over here on the projector window, it shows me this code. Some of you have already joined in. So you're going to head to if you'd like to again, you don't have to you can just follow along from my screen, join pd.com. And you're going to type in Zarek muffins evaluate misty umbrellas <laughs> x m e m u. While you do that, I am going to take a drink of water. I'm also gonna blow my nose because nobody likes the sound of somebody on a microphone with the sniffles. Those of you that listen to the Educational Duct Tape podcast, you're now getting in on some of the, the preparations that I do before going live. There's a nose blow. There's a sip of water, and then there's some things I say too, like uh, unique New York, unique New York. Gotta get, gotta get your mouth ready to do all the talking. <laughs> I didn't intend to tell you guys these secrets. This is crazy. Okay, so what I'm going to do here too to give an extra little bonus for those of you that can't connect on Pear Deck right now or just don't want to have two devices open or two tabs open is I'm going to swipe over here to this other view on my screen here. 
And you can see over on the left, it says student to remind us. So I am at join. I'm sorry, joinpd.com. And I'm going to type in XMEMU and hit enter. Okay, and that's going to pop me in as a student. That way I could show you student and teacher view at the same time. Now, as I said, it always asks us this SEL question at the beginning. You can turn it off in your teacher settings and the students can opt to skip it if they want to, but it's fantastic data and you'll see it throughout the teacher view as we go through this. So I'm going to say I'm feeling happy and then it waits for the presentation to load up. Okay, now as the teacher over here, I now need to, to navigate to the correct screen I want. So here on my teacher dashboard, I'm gonna click close join code. I'm gonna scroll way back up to the top here to where I ask you guys my first question. So here's a regular slide. So you should now be seeing that on your screen. Here's my student screen. Ah, he's seeing it. That's just a regular old Google Slides slide right there. Okay, notice from my teacher view in the teacher dashboard, I can see that's what I'm casting to you guys. I see the options on the left and I see the slide. On the projector view, I don't see the other slides going down the left side. I just see this because it's meant to be nice and big on my slideshow. So a little quick difference between dashboard and projector view. The projector view is in the free version, the dashboard's in the premium version, which you all have access to right now. Now, because it's a student paste, you're all waiting for me to move on to the next one. So I'm now going to jump to the next one. Okay, so here is the next slide. Okay, here is what I see in teacher view. And again, uh, this is going to show people's names. So in a normal setting, I wouldn't wanna have this up on my screen because students would be able to see the names associated with the answers. So I would be projecting this, which is just the slide. So let's jump over to my student view here. And you can see, I see slide on the left, answer spot on the right. So I'm gonna type in, I am Jake Miller at Jake Miller. Okay, I don't have to hit enter or anything like that. I just leave it right there. The teacher's gonna handle it for me. Okay, so over here from this slide, I just jump forward to the next one. Okay, and this is just a regular slide to point out to you guys. Remember I was saying, GIFs will automatically play in Power, I'm sorry, in Pear Deck as long as I have that, uh, that Pear Deck Power Up extension added in. So make sure you have that so the students see them playing on their screens. And here is the teacher screen up here. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the teacher dashboard. Notice I see all the slides along the left and I see this main slide in the middle here. Whereas on the projector view, I just see the main slide. So let me jump you guys forward. So it says, what's one tip that you could share for remote learning? And you can see answers are pouring in immediately. I can already see you guys responding. Notice, by the way, I can't see your names now because you, you were not logged in. So because I made it open, you guys have those kind of anonymous animal names like we're used to in Google. And I could see 157 of my 166 students have answered this slide. So let me jump over here and answer it. My tip is don't try to do too much. Focus on student relationships and well-being. Okay, and if I swipe over here, I will see that answer somewhere in this list here. Now, notice that what I'm projecting to you is just the blank slide. If I want to project some student answers to you, I can. Here's how I do that. Let's say I love this one right here. You can't control everything and cereal can be dinner, especially, especially if it's cinnamon toast crunch cereal. That's a good advice, donkey, thank you. So if I want everybody to see that one in the class, I just click a star on it. And now if I swipe over my student view, I see, let's see, I'm not seeing it coming up. Okay, let's see. Oh, I gotta click show responses. And now if I swipe over here, I will see There it is coming up on my, on my projector view. That's what it is. It's coming up on my projector view instead of on my student view. Sorry about that. So I'm seeing it coming up on projector view. So this is during a live lesson, you would be projecting these responses. So I can go through here and let's say I really like this keep it short one. I totally agree with that advice. Checking on your students' mental health. Heck yes. Be patient and keep it simple. Go with what your students already know and build from there. Yes, please. Make a standing desk out of cardboard boxes. No, I'm sorry. I gotta be sitting down comfy. I'm not projecting that one. <laughs> Sorry. Student pays paradox for lots of learning. I agree. So now if I jump back over to my projector screen, now I see only those five projecting and notice that they're anonymous too. I, as the teacher, can tell who they were and announce it to the kids if I want to praise them, but by default, they're up there anonymously so that we don't have to worry about students seeing other students' information. Okay. Notice that this only works if I'm doing it synchronously and kind of projecting to the class. You guys, without seeing my screen, can't see those ones I was making a focus for you. Okay.
All right, so I'm gonna click hide responses and we'll see that change now. Okay, and now let's jump forward to the next one. So this one is asking you, how else could you use a text slide? Notice, by the way, while you're typing that on my screen, I see this black box on the left over here that says notes. Where are those coming from? Those are actually the slide notes, the presentation notes from Google Slides. So I had made these presentation notes in Google Slides, and they're now popping up here in Pear Deck so I could see them while I present. I could scroll up and down on them by dragging, like scrolling up and down with my fingers on my trackpad, okay? On the projector view, I can't see that. You guys as the student can't see that. I see these answers over here as well. Okay, so put in my answer. And so now as we go down through here, let me look, as I'm gonna look through these questions, you can see them on your screen as I go down through them. I have used the text slide to hear students' thoughts about a specific topic, read students' connections to text, that's fantastic to get ideas from your students and general questions. I have students type text evidence and articles. That's great, great example of some, some concrete classroom stuff. Not that these all aren't great. Give directions for another task. So this would, the text slides are for students to type in. So if you're having the students give the directions, that would be appropriate there. But if, if it's not the students, then that, that wouldn't be relevant there. So a title slide or teacher notes, those, those are different kinds of text slides. So these aren't Pear Deck text slides. These are regular text slides. So we're, ta we're talking about the Pear Deck ones, okay? For AutoCAD drawings and Google SketchUp, that would be a great way to be able to add them in uh, as web-based slides. Okay, Pterodactyl is lost, Pterodactyl, I'm sorry. You could reach out to me uh, on Twitter after the session and I could help you go through this. But what, what's happening now is on my projector, quote unquote, is this slide. On my teacher screen is this, this view here. And on the student screens is this. So Pterodactyl, if you're connected right now, you should see on the left, the question prompt and on the right, a spot for you to type an idea or type, type your answer there, okay? And if, you, if that doesn't work for you, please reach out afterwards and we'll, we'll, we'll clear that, all that up, okay? No, notice I've starred a few of these. Let's go ahead and star these two. And you'll see that they now come up on my, oh, I gotta hit, click show responses, and they'll now come up on my presentation screen over here. But again, this is not as relevant in remote learning unless you're doing like a live Zoom like we're doing right here while we're do, going through these slides. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward through these slides. Notice, by the way, by your names, quote unquote names, they're the, they're the animals, you could see your answer to that first question about how you're feeling. So pterodactyl came in feeling good. Hopefully I haven't confused pterodactyl into feeling bad. Uh, ducks feeling good. Eagles a little bit meh. Starfish is a little bit meh. So I know how my students are feeling as I go around the room. And normally I would know what these names are. They wouldn't say random names because I would have had them log in. Okay, let's move forward now. So here is a drag slide. Okay, so I am going to, now this might work a little bit, a little bit glitchy because there's so many of us dragging at the same time. So if it's not working well on your side, you could just watch me within Zoom here. So I grab the dot and I move it over to my location, put it right here around Ohio. It's pretty close. Okay, and that's where I'm at. Okay, so that's what it looks like on the student end. And then the student just sits there and waits. Now on the teacher end, the presentation mode shows nothing. It just shows the blank slide. In the teacher dashboard, I could see where these dots are all popping up. It might come through a little bit slow because we have so many of us connected to this. There they are. So many of us connected to this Pear Deck activity as they pop up. Now, if I want to, I could show them up on the projector as well. So I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna go ahead and lock your screens now. I apologize, you're not gonna be able to move your Pear Deck dot anymore. Okay, so now within Pear Deck, your screen is locked. You could still navigate away from Pear Deck in another tab or something like that, but now you can't grab the, move those dots around. Otherwise, your students will love to move the dots around the screen all crazy like. Okay, I'm gonna click on show responses and you could see over here on my teacher view, I could see all of those dots up here on the screen. Okay, now again, as you can see, some of them are still moving. I thought I had locked them. Oh, there's lock screens again. Maybe I had unlocked it. If the screens are unlocked, the kids are able to continue moving it around on the screen, which can be fun. It can also be disruptive too. So I see them all overlaid, okay? In my teacher view, I can, instead of viewing this student by student, I can also click up here on grid layout because right now I'm seeing it overlaid, I could switch to grid layout and now I see where each of you are. So as this loads up, I'll see where rooster is and where butterfly is and where frog is and where panda is. I'll be able to see everybody's locations separately. I can also do this and it's taking a second to load up all the images because that's a lot of images to load. I can also do this in list view and see a list of everybody's different locations there too. Okay, but again, the images are loading up a little bit slow. 
Okay, I'm going to skip over the one where we show our location in the United States and in interest of time here, and we're going to jump to the rubber ducky slide. Okay, so I'm going to the rubber ducky slide. Okay, your screens are automatically unlocked because I jumped to a new one. What the student sees, I'll show you what the student sees here for those who aren't participating, is the star that I provided there. They click on it and they drag it to where they're at. I'm feeling like rubber ducky number two. I'm not quite rubber ducky number one today. Okay. And then on the teacher scene, I'll see, I'll see all that data. Now, the data is coming in a little bit slowly. As you see now, a bunch of stars have popped up on the screen just because we've got so many people connected to this Pear Deck. Normally, this is a very fluid process where you see all of your 20 stars pop up very quickly. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and lock screens, which is a nice thing to do so you can talk about it. You can say, you got two seconds to finish putting your answer up there, and then I'm gonna lock screens. And then once you lock screens, then the students now can't move things around anymore and they have to focus on your voice and what you're talking about there. Okay, let's move on to another different option. So let's skip over the, the uh, sharing about draggable slides and jump down to a multiple choice question. So now you see a multiple choice question up on your screen. Notice here on my teacher screen, I can see the votes coming in. Yeah, RG, let's get it. Woo! <laughs> I can see the votes coming in in this overlay view. I can also click on grid layout and see what each of you are saying. So if, if one of these is wrong, as much as I, I, I like to say that soft G is not right, it's not wrong. I just don't like that one. If something was wrong here, I could identify what students it was and follow up with it. So for those of you that don't have this logged in as a student, on your screen. Here is what the student view looks like. I see the multiple choice question on the left. The pictures are gone in this view, okay? And I could see, I'm gonna vote for hard G, and that goes over there, okay? Now, if I want to, I could send to the projector this bar graph to be able to have a discussion with the kids. Notice as I hover over them, I could see which kids were in this group too. So I could identify which kids they were by going through that, okay? I can also allow you guys to change your answers. Okay, I can click on new prompt here, which is something I wanted to point out anyhow, click on new prompt and choose to either add a blank slide or one of these template slides, or I could just go ahead and re-add in my same slide all over again. And we see them here as current content. I could re-add them as a draggable or as a text or a drawing or a number and have you guys repeat that question right then if I want to. Okay, let's do another multiple choice and find out what everybody works in, what kind of teachers we all are, what kind of students we work with. Again, from the student view, I see the question in the center and I see the, the options over on the side. I'm gonna click professional development. Okay, I'm gonna move forward from this in a second here in interest of time and we're gonna skip to the number slides. Okay, we're gonna skip over my question about how else could you use a multiple choice slide. Let's now jump to a number slide so you guys can see what that's like. The cool thing is what you'll see on my screen as you enter in your answers here. Check out that display with the quartiles shown and the median shown and the upper and lower extreme shown, my math brain just geeks out whenever I look at this view. This makes me so happy to see this, right? Okay, and awesome, what an array of teachers we have in here across a whole array of different years. Now, you can see what students can do if they type in a really large number like they've been teaching for 100 years, it might feel like it, it's going to skew all of this data up there so that then my box and whisker plot no longer shows. Now, if you were the person that typed that in, you could just change it, I could say, hey, Billy, change that one. Sorry if anybody's named Billy out there. Um, and then take, and they'll change it and the data will correct for me. I can also go into grid layout and see what each student said, identify who it was, um, hide the response from the data if I need to, or focus the response and things like that so that I, I can take out any of those if it was a bad actor, okay? Let's look at one number slot, one other one, number one, because it's a fun one. I have forgotten what day it was, blank times. <laughs> I love that we've got somebody at like 175 out there. Somebody's forgotten what day it was, 500. It is Blur's Day. It is Maple. 49th blurs day. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. It's been crazy lately. Hasn't it? Okay. So those are numerical slides. We can see what that looks like. Oh, I should show you what it looks like for a student. I just see a blank to type a number in. I could use this arrow to go up through the numbers or I could just type them in. So for me, it's been eight times. Okay. Okay. How else could you use a numerical slide? I'm going to skip over that in interest of time. Let's do a drawing slide. Show me what's for dinner.
So my wife used our Thanksgiving, I'm sorry, our Easter leftovers. We have a crescent roll. So here I am as a student. It's a crescent roll. As long as my students have left any for me, a crescent roll with um, leftover ham and cheese in it. Does that sound good? How's my drawing look? Okay, so now as the teacher now, in teacher view on the dashboard here, I could see all of your drawings there. Some, that's somebody's baked potato or something right there, okay? I can also overlay them, which is just insane. Why would we want all those drawings on top of each other? There are some times when you'd actually want to see that. Or I can go to grid layout, which is the ideal one here, and I could see them all at the same time. A lot of people still haven't figured it out. It's okay, you've got time. Uh, somebody said earlier that cereal is an okay option. So you could do that too, with a BLT. So you could see all these different drawings coming up. Michelob Ultra, at least they're going low, going low cal there, nice. Okay, I could hide responses if they're inappropriate. I could spotlight them by clicking the star and then it'll come up here on my presentation screen. Okay, so that's a drawing slide. We're gonna skip over this drawing slide here and that drawing slide there and that drawing slide there. There's some of our templates. Okay, so remember we added this one with the thumbs up and thumbs down. You would drag the dot. We added this one about something else you're hoping to learn. You could type it in there. We're gonna skip over it. If you have something else you didn't learn today, you can message me or message Pear Deck. We'll help you out. Circle how you're feeling, a stretch break, the clock. I do wanna show this graphing one right here. So let's jump to the graphing one. This is one of my favorite things is how this is gonna end up looking in overlay mode. So if you know how to graph that equation, go ahead and graph it and we'll see all of the graphs show up together on the screen here. And so I could really quickly identify which students are right and which students are wrong. I could show it to the class and say, look, do we understand this or do we not? We as a class clearly do not understand seventh grade algebra, guys. We are a hot mess here. <laughs> but I can go through and see who all of these people are. I can go to grid layout and analyze which students have the correct answer. So elephant for here, here for example, has the right answer. Bravo, elephant. So I could star elephant and put it up on the projector for everybody to see. But if I were in, oops, I didn't click show responses. But if I didn't, uh, if we all knew the same answer, I could project them in that overlay view. Uh, I can click right here to overlay view and show the whole class on my projector that overlay view of all the ones that I've selected. I'd have, to, sorry, I clicked mute there. I'd have to select them first to have them show up there, but that's a great way to go over those different things. I had a Venn diagram we we're gonna do about how beer and coffee compare. We're gonna skip over that one. But one important thing I want you to see on your screen is there is a, <laughs> just a check mark. There is a text option, so you can actually type text boxes into there. So a Venn diagram is a wonderful option here, okay? Let's look at a couple of our web slides ones before we wrap up, okay? Here was the one where I asked you to listen to some of this podcast, okay? And you could see in the teacher view, I see the slide on the left, and I see the audio on the right. I could just click play. Thanks for joining me for part, and I could start listening right there. Okay. I can also ask questions on these slides too when I put content in there. So I could ask you to, re, re, uh, to give feedback on it. Let's jump to this YouTube video one. You can see that in the student view, it doesn't let me click play. It, what it does is it opens Welcome it up to in a separate tab in student view. So that's what happens if you add the video onto the slide. If I do the embed code for the video, let's look at that. You can see the video actually plays there. So if YouTube Welcome is to important 20 to you, that's a really nice way to go through and do it is to actually use that embed code as we talked about. And you guys will get a recording of this video so you can go back and see how to do that. Let's look at the Mentimeter that we were doing. So here it asks you, what do you teach? I'm gonna say I teach ed tech. Okay, and now on my screen here, No, I'd have to open up the Mentimeter to show it to you. I should have I should have had that ready. But if I now go to that Menti, here's what do you teach? There are your answers popping into there and, and, and populating there. And I could have that website ready for you guys to be able to see it. So I could actually copy this code and paste it into the next slide for you to be able to see it as we go through it. Okay, here was the answer garden. And the answer garden says, as it loads up here on your screen. What is your favorite tool for remote learning? I say Pear Deck. Okay, and we'll see them populate here. Very similar to Menti and Answer Garden and, and Menti are very similar tools. Menti has other additional features that, that uh, Answer Garden does not, but you see those uh, uh, populate right there. Okay, we talked about flashcards. Let's check out how these flashcards appear on your screen. See, I asked you some important questions. What's my favorite candy? Jake's favorite candy. 
what's my favorite beer? I, got, I get the slides going the wrong way. Jake's favorite beer are New England IPAs. Jake's favorite food, tacos. So you can see it embedded right there. So if I want my students to, I want to say, hey, take five minutes to review these flashcards. It's embedded right there in Pear Deck and it forces the kids to jump right into there to do that. Okay. We also talked about uh, using forms. So there's that form embedded right into there. Okay. And you could fill it out right there. So I'm actually going to end the session now as this one's up. So I apologize. We'll send this link back out if you need it um, so that we could, uh, Danielle could do some, some closing stuff and I, I will handle doing prizes afterwards and things like that. But I do want to show afterwards what it looks like on the teacher end when I end it. So as the teacher, I'm going to click end. I could title it if I want to. So I'm going to title it 41620 webinar. Okay, I'm going to click save and end session. Normally right here, I would see the option to send you takeaway docs, but because I didn't have you all log in and you're not all using Google accounts, I can't do that. But normally I would, so I'm going to show you what one of those docs looks like. Okay, and now it brings me here to all of my Pear Deck activities and I can come back into this uh, presentation by going to my sessions here and I could click on here to stay at 638. Here is that session. I can open back up the teacher dashboard. I can reopen the session. I could rename the session. I could archive the session. I could export the results to a spreadsheet. The last thing I want to make sure I show you guys though is what do those uh, takeaway documents look like. So I, I ran this as a demo earlier and here's one of the takeaway docs. So it gives you a session up a section up at the top to, for the students to be able to type in a summary. And then it actually shows their responses to all the slides. So it puts in every slide, whether there was a question or not. So it gives the students all the slides. Let's drop down to where there were questions. Okay. Okay. There is that slide. And right there, I could see my response to it. There is this slide. There was no question. Here's this slide. There was my response. The really wonderful thing here is as a teacher, you can go in there now because this is a Google Doc. So now I can comment back to these students. So I could just go in here and add a comment or I could share this with the parents to see what the kids did in the activity. Okay. So this is just a little, little idea for a little extra extension that's not actually part of Pear Deck. It's part of Google Docs. But if you're a Google user and you turn on those takeaways, these options that are here are really wonderful. See, by the way, I could see what the slide originally looked like, where I put my dot, what the slide originally looked like, where I put my star, what the slide originally looked like, what my answer was. Okay, so that's a takeaways, okay? Uh, I apologize, I, I, I could talk about Pear Deck as you could tell for like five hours because I'm so excited about it. But Danielle, I, I'm sure we've got some, some questions or anything to, to tie a neat bow on this or stuff like that. Is there anything I missed or anything you want to point out or anything we, wanna, we need to follow up on? Jake, you were fantastic. And I think you covered a, a ton of content in the last hour. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we've got a couple of questions just about making sure that everyone gets on that form so we have that again in chat yep. and we'll be following up with both the recording the giveaway form and a little bit more information on our premium instant access uh tomorrow for everyone that registered and everyone that joined as well Awesome. Yeah, with, with that form for the giveaways, I'm not in a rush to, to give them away. So I'm going to take a break and, and kick it for a little bit. My kids are upstairs going crazy, probably eating all my dinner. So I'm going to wait until after I eat my dinner until I give away those, those giveaways. So if you haven't accessed the form yet, relax. You've got a little bit of time. I'll wait for maybe another hour or something before I do that so that people that are finishing up late or anything like that can get access to it. Perfect. That sounds great. Is that dinner tacos by chance? <laughs> no, it is. It is crescent rolls. It is ham and cheese and crescent rolls tonight. I wish it was tacos. Though. That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So I think that's about it. I know we have a couple of questions that we didn't get to, but want to be mindful of time. So for everyone that did not get your questions answered, please feel free to tweet us or tweet Jake. Yes. Or you can always email help at peardeck.com. We're definitely available for you. Jake, thank you so much for spending this hour with us. It was fantastic. And thank you to everyone that joined. Uh, we know that you have more than enough on your plate on a daily basis, and particularly right now in these crazy times. So thank you for taking a little bit of your evening to spend with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thanks, Jake. Thank you.